Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we're going to look at simple resonance structure practice. These questions are from the resonance practice quiz, which you can find on my website along with the entire tutorial series, LeiaForSci.com slash resonance. The first question asks for the resonance structures of nitrate. If you follow my Lewis tutorial video linked below, you'll see that we start out with a nitrogen surrounded by three oxygen atoms, where nitrogen should be double bound to one oxygen and single bound to two others. The double bound oxygen has two lone pairs. The single bound oxygens each have three lone pairs, giving us a formal negative charge on the single bound oxygen and a positive charge on nitrogen. When you're Thinking how to start resonance, you always want to look for your least stable, most negative electrons, and you want to push them towards the least stable positive atom. In this case, we'll take the electrons from the oxygen on the right or left. It doesn't matter since the molecule is symmetrical, they're exactly the same. We show our arrows starting at the electrons and moving towards the positive atom. This will cause a double bond to form between oxygen and nitrogen, giving nitrogen too many electrons in its octet. To compensate, we'll take the pi electrons binding nitrogen to oxygen and kick them out where? Onto the oxygen atom below. Don't forget the double-headed arrows to show that the resonance can happen back and forth and redraw the structure. Oxygen on the upper right now has a double bond to nitrogen. And oxygen on the bottom now has a third lone pair, moving the negative charge from the upper right oxygen to the lower oxygen. Nitrogen still has a positive charge because it still has four bonds. If we show the oxygen that just became negative, attacking the nitrogen and kicking out those electrons, we'll simply go back to the structure we started with. Instead, we now want to involve the other negative oxygen and show its electrons coming down to attack the nitrogen, causing the bond between the double bound oxygen and nitrogen to collapse onto oxygen. Once again, a double headed arrow to show that it's moving back and forth. We now have a double bond between the upper left oxygen and nitrogen, and a third lone pair on the upper right oxygen atom. Once again, the single bound oxygens are negatively charged, and nitrogen is still positively charged. These are the three major contributing structures, but there's one more that you can show for your minor structure. If we start with this structure at random, instead of showing oxygen attacking nitrogen, we can simply show the electrons from the pi bond collapsing onto oxygen without reforming a double bond anywhere. This will give us a structure that has nitrogen single bound to three oxygen atoms, where each oxygen has three lone pairs and a negative charge. You can follow the colors to see where each pair came from. The problem with the structure, and the reason why this is a minor structure, is the nitrogen in the middle. If you look at the nitrogen, it only has three bonds for a total of six instead of eight electrons in its octet. It gets a formal charge of positive two and has an incomplete octet. These are two very, very unhappy situations, making this molecule very, very unstable. Each of the above structures has a positive nitrogen, a plus one rather than a plus two, and every atom has a complete octet, so they're stable in that respect. That gives us a total of three major and one minor resonance structures for the nitrate ion. Next example we'll look at is the carbonate ion, which is CO3 two minus. We'll start by drawing a skeleton very similar to nitrate, except that here, Given two negative charges, something is going to be different. That difference comes from the central carbon. Nitrogen with four bonds will have a positive charge. Carbon with four bonds is happy and has no charge. This means when we have two negative oxygen atoms, we have nothing to cancel on the positive side, and so the net charge is negative two. The resonance for carbonate will look exactly like the resonance for nitrate. We'll start with a lone pair on a negative oxygen atom and bring that bond towards carbon, collapsing the double bond between carbon and oxygen onto the oxygen atom. Double-headed arrow to show that it's resonance, and let's see what changed. We now have a double bond between carbon and the upper oxygen, and an extra lone pair on the lower oxygen. Add your formal charges, and we're good. Now we'll evolve the third oxygen and bring its electrons down, 
forming a bond between carbon and oxygen, and collapsing that newly formed bond back onto the oxygen atom. This gives us a double bond between carbon and the upper left oxygen, and an extra lone pair on the upper right oxygen, once again with two negative charges. These are your three major contributing structure, but like nitrate, we can also find a minor structure. If we take this structure and simply break the pi bond, collapsing the electrons onto oxygen, we get a carbon atom single bound to three oxygen atoms which each have a negative charge, and the central carbon has only three bonds, six in its octet, with a formal charge of plus one. You'll see carbocations in organic chemistry, but they're relatively unstable, especially when bound to three negative oxygen atoms. The negative oxygen will want to come back down and attack the carbon, making this structure very unstable and only a minor contributing structure. Our final example is the chloride ion. Are you starting to see a pattern? We have a central atom bound to three oxygens. Given a net negative charge, the question is how many pi bonds do we make? And with chlorine, we have the exception to the octet rule, and that means we can have more than four bonds or eight electrons on that central atom. This gives us a chlorine double bound to two oxygen atoms and single bound to one. Oxygen with a double bond and two lone pairs has no formal charge. Oxygen with a single bond and three lone pairs has a charge of negative one, but chlorine is where it gets interesting. If you count up the total number of electrons, you'll see we're actually missing two, and that's because in addition to five bonds on chlorine, we have a lone electron pair. This is an exception to the octet rule, because with five bonds and two lone pairs, chlorine has a total of 12 electrons in its octet. Even with the extra electrons, it still has a formal charge of zero, as explained in the tutorial link below. And that's the trickiest aspect of this question. Once you figure out how to draw your starting structure, the rest of it will look exactly like the nitrate resonance, except that we have two double bonds to account for. We'll show the electrons from the negative oxygen reaching towards chlorine to form a pi bond, and as a result, chlorine can only have 12. Adding two more electrons is too much, so we have to break one of the pi bonds onto a nearby oxygen atom. The new structure looks exactly the same, except that the upper oxygen is negative and the lower oxygen is neutral. The negative oxygen will now do the same thing, reach down and form a bond to chlorine, but this time we'll show the left oxygen breaking its pi bond with chlorine and the electrons collapsing onto oxygen. What do we have? A double bond between the upper oxygen and chlorine, a single bond between the lower left oxygen and chlorine, and an extra lone pair with a negative charge. In each of these structures, we have a chlorine atom that's neutral and one negative oxygen. These are each major contributing structures, and just like before, we can show a minor, less stable structure. Let's justify that. If I take this structure and simply break one of the pi bonds between chlorine and oxygen without reforming another pi bond, I'll get a structure that looks like this. An extra lone pair on the lower right oxygen with a negative charge and chlorine now with two single bonds, one double bond, and one lone pair. It looks like it should be happy, but pay attention to the formal charge. Chlorine should have seven. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Chlorine has a charge of plus one. Think about what you know of halogens. Do electronegative halogens want to have a positive charge? Absolutely not. That makes this molecule unstable, and that makes this a minor contributing structure. If you want to take this a step further and break that second pi bond onto oxygen, the structure is even worse. We have three negative oxygens and a central chlorine with a formal charge of plus two. In resonance structures, you want to avoid separation of charge wherever possible, and you want to avoid giving an atom more than one charge. A positive two on an electronegative chlorine makes this an absolutely terrible, terrible structure. We'll call it a super minor resonance contributing structure. This was just question one on the resonance quiz. If you found this helpful, make sure you try the entire quiz, which you can find on my website along with the resonance tutorial series. 
layerforsci.com slash resonance.